It is now noon here in Las Vegas, so welcome to the Good News at Noon from Good Samaritan Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Jim Slater, and I know you don't normally see me on Tuesdays. You're, if you're looking for Pastor Scott and Ron Altman's, uh, they're not available today. And since we will not be doing Good News on Thursday because of Thanksgiving, uh, they asked if I would cover on Tuesday. So you got me for this Tuesday edition of the Good News at Noon. And if you're not familiar with the stories that I have normally been doing on Thursdays, then let me just explain a little bit that uh, for my edition of the Good News at Noon, I've been sharing some stories that I've collected over the years of my ministry that I call the Good News from Fox Hill, uh, about a town in Wisconsin that uh, the stories are basically parables, if you will, just like Jesus taught in parables. And the idea is to kind of listen to the story and how they relate to the Bible passages that I share, and then uh, get some idea of uh, li a life of faith. Um, so uh, today's story is entitled The Bread of Life, and it will basically be a Thanksgiving story. So I hope that this will be uh, something that adds to your uh, appreciation and understanding of Thanksgiving. People are getting on board, I see, and it's good to have you with us. Uh, and I see some names that I recognize from Thursdays, so uh, many of you are, are familiar with these stories that I have to share. Um, I will begin with some Bible passages that uh, relate to the story or from which the story is kind of drawn. Um, the first two I will not read for you. You're free to look them up on your own. The first is from the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 8. And the second is from the New Testament, one of the epistles to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. But our gospel lesson for today that I will share with you is from the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, verse 35, and then verses 41 to 51. Good to see all of you with us. Listen now to the Gospel lesson for today. Jesus said to the people, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jewish leaders began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So sit back and relax and enjoy today's story entitled, bread of life. So it is true that faith really matters out there in Fox Hill, Wisconsin, my hometown. David Martin had gone into semi-retirement from the pastorate at Fox Hill Lutheran Church, but Vicar Lena, the seminary student intern who was now handling most of the pastoral responsibilities, always appreciated when Pastor Martin asked to make the home communion visits. 
He was always grateful for the blessings he received when he shared God's gifts of bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, with the elderly and homebound. And around the time of Thanksgiving was his favorite time for such a visit. Holy Communion is often referred to as the Eucharist, and Pastor Martin would explain how the Greek word Eucharista means to give thanks. Theo Larson was on his visitation list last week. David felt like he could put his car on autopilot because it seemed to know its way to the Larson farm all by itself. You just head west on Maple Street until you're out of town, then turn right where the old red schoolhouse used to be, drive one mile north, then one mile west, and, and there you are. The house was on the right, and all the fields surrounding you were Larson fields of amber grain. Humming, America the Beautiful, Ah, uh, yes, those amber waves of grain. As he does as a matter of habit on trips to the Larson farm, Pastor Martin rolled down the window of his car, gave a broad wave, and yelled, Hello, Ted! Theo Larson, out on the combine, couldn't hear a thing which was good because he hated to be called Ted. But he knew the wave meant that the pastor had arrived for his monthly home communion visit. Theo Larson was one of the many bachelor farmers working the fertile fields surrounding Fox Hill. Like all the rest, he took his farming quite seriously, which accounted for his acute lack of family and any social life. Now in his 70s, Theo still did all the work himself, having produced no farmhands of his own and being too frugal, that means cheap, to hire anyone. But Theo also took his faith seriously. Although constantly breaking the fourth commandment to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy with corporate worship, he always argued that even though only one leper who was healed by Jesus returned to give thanks, it didn't necessarily mean that the others weren't grateful. So he always said his prayers of thanksgiving. He had been raised by a radically religious mother who insisted that they receive communion more than only four times a year. As a child, he, his mother Edith, and his two sisters would occupy a pew at Fox Hill Lutheran Church every week. But Edith wouldn't give an offering to the church until old Reverend Olson came to visit once a month to give the whole family communion. This was a practice, perhaps rather questionable in nature, that Pastor Martin had inherited with Theo Larson. Coming back to town, it took Pastor Martin a full five minutes before he could turn left onto Outer Maple Street because the line of traffic heading out of Fox Hill was so long. Rumor had it that the brand spanking new IGA in Grafton was selling a loaf of bread for one dollar. Myrtle Knorr at Knorr's Piggly Wiggly shook her head in disbelief. She had it all figured out with paper and pencil. If you counted what it cost in gas to drive to Grafton and back for your one day, one dollar loaf of bread, you'd be better off walking around the corner to Knorr's store and buying your bread at their everyday low price. People, always looking for a better deal when the best deal is right before their eyes. Everybody knows how good the home-baked bread at Knorr's was. It was made with the best grain, right from old Theo Larson's farm. I hope they choke on that dollar bread, Myrtle said to Pete, the only person in the store. You don't know how long that IGA bread has been sitting around with all them preservatives in it. Why, you eat that bread and you might die. 
this tirade was getting Pete hungry. So when the noon whistle blew at 12.05, Pete waddled out of Noor's and carried his 300-pound body over to Dan's diner. Peter Lundblatt was a large, rotund man, kind of like a weeble. You know, like weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. He was always hanging around the shops of Fox Hill during the daytime and at the Motel One, the one and only motel in town, at night. Once, back in my younger days in town, I had called Pete a bum. My mother hissed at me. Pete has never bummed off of anybody, and I know she was right. He never bummed or borrowed, yet he never did a lick of work. Pete Lundblatt was more like a fixture in Fox Hill. Always here, always there, always at the diner for lunch, where Dan and Evelyn would keep the lights down low and the fans turned up high to keep it cool in the heat of the day. And there, in the cool darkness, the conversation was like a liturgy. Evelyn would say, What will you have today, Pete? And the Pete would say, Same as he did every day, Make it roast beef on white today, with extra mayo and a bag of chips. Then Dan would add, Can I get you a cold one, Pete? You know, man does not live by bread alone. And they would all chuckle at Dan's quote of scripture. And then Pete would say, You know I can't pronounce it, but that one there has my name on it. And Dan would pour him a foamy glass of Leinenkugel beer. This time, however... Pete had a second one, and then a third. He was kind of staggering as he left the cool darkness of the diner and opened the door only to be broadsided by a bolt of bright, hot sunshine. He took one step outside and collapsed in a heap on the front stoop. And that was the last step of Peter Lundblatt, the fixture of Fox Hill. The county coroner listed the official cause of death as a massive coronary brought on by obesity. But I prefer Dan's theory. Beer, you see, has yeast in it, just like bread. And when you heat it up, it expands. Pete had one beer too many. And instead of going to his cavernous stomach, it had gone to his head. And that oven just couldn't handle it. The proof of Dan's theory was that, in search of Pete's motel room, the sheriff discovered thousands of dollars in his mattress. Evelyn summed it up simply, that's a lot of dough. I reckon he wanted to take him with him, but in the end, you never can. While Vicar Lena presided at Peter Lundblatt's funeral last week, it wasn't the only one. Theo Larson also died. His tall, lanky body was found stretched out in a field of barley when the widow Lillian reported to Sheriff Steiner that she hadn't received her nightly phone call from Leo. It seems that every evening Theo Larson would ring the widow Lillian just to make sure she was all right. The ritual had been going on for years. Pastor Martin conducted Theo's funeral, sharing many of his secrets, his sense of Christian calling in being a farmer and providing food for people, the annual tithe of the produce of his fields, 10% of his crop income he donated to, donated to an organization called Bread for the World, a hunger relief group, and his peculiar communion practices. Apparently, in all their visits together, Pastor Martin had gotten to know Theo Larson pretty well, and indeed love him for the gift of God that he was. His passing was not a time of mourning, but a time of Eucharist, of giving thanks for the one who now returned to Jesus. 
I was impressed by something reported to me that Pastor Martin said in his sermon. Theo knew that man does not live by bread alone, but he wanted to be sure that he was doing his fair share and making certain that everyone had enough bread to eat. He knew that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So he wanted to make sure that he didn't forsake the bread of life, the living bread from heaven, his Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Goodbye, Ted. Only Pastor Martin could call him that. I give thanks for you, and the world gives thanks for you. Last Sunday, as the congregation at Fox Hill Lutheran Church sang, Come, ye thankful people, come, Pete and Leo weren't really missing. Theo, Pete and Theo weren't really missing. Not because neither one of them were ever there all that often, but because they were on everybody's minds and in everybody's prayers. And it struck Pastor Martin as he proclaimed the words of institution for Holy Communion, Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave thanks, and likewise the cup, that the Greek word is Eucharist. For all of us, Jesus gave thanks. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and remember to give thanks to the one who gave thanks for Pete, and Theo, and you, and me. Thank God for the loved ones gathered at your table, for the ones who this year cannot join you, and for the empty spaces of those you will see again in eternity. And that's the good news from Fox Hill, where faith really matters for every single man, woman, and child. Oh, and, and the married ones too. Amen. So with a little bit of time left, I can't tell if I'm frozen or not, if you're, if you're able to hear this, but I did want to end with the words of a very favorite Thanksgiving hymn of mine, Now Thank We All Our God. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done, in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. O oh, may this bounteous God through all of life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us, and keep us all in grace, and guide us when perplexed, and free us from all harm in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Spirit blessed, who reign in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Have a very happy Thanksgiving to you, your family, and your friends. Amen.